welcome to another exciting episode of the RNF talk show. Um, as always, we are especially excited um, this in this episode because we have another special guest in the studio. Um, I'm going to introduce this guest um, just a little bit um, later. But um, before we start the show, I'd like to say um, a special thank you to a few people. Um, Thank you to Smart Picture um, because they are producing this show, uh, Smart Picture Entertainment. Um, also, a big thank you to those that are following the show. Please make this um, episode today very interactive, uh, be involved. So today, um, on this episode, we will be talking about domestic violence or family violence. Um, our guest in studio today is um, Dr. Joseph Masika. Um, we've all heard about the man and we are just so excited that he honored our, in, our invitation to come into the studio. So thank you so much. I'm going to let you introduce yourself. So who is um, Dr. Joseph Masika? Yeah, thanks so much for inviting me today to come to the studio. I feel so honored and privileged and, uh, to come to share conversation with the community and the audience outside the studio about domestic violence. Um, as you introduced me, uh, my name is Joseph Masika, I'm from Tanzania, um, um, that's my country, and I've been in, in Australia for almost 20 years. And uh, on the other note, I work for the state government, and uh, I'm involved with the South Australian Multicultural and Ethnic Affairs Commission. I'm one of the commissioners in the commission uh, since 2011, but to also have other responsibilities within the state. Okay. The, in the community, but we say, look, we have about 20,000 um, 20, Africans in South Australia. Okay. But uh, around the nation, in the whole of Australia, we have about 1 million Africans, so people of African background. And, wow, uh, 1 million. 1 million. Wow. And uh, I'm the national president of the Federation of African Communities Council in Australia. So, also, it's my responsibility to advocate on this big number of Africans with the Commonwealth government and also supporting up the state leaders when they engage with their governments within their own territories and their states. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, we are just so honored to have you on the show. Um, some of the things you've done within the community, we could take a whole show just to talk about some of the things you've been involved with. Yeah. So we just, yeah, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, so today we are um, talking about domestic violence and everybody said bring Dr. Masika in the studio to talk about it. You are the ambassador um, for White Ribbon. For White Ribbon. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, yes, uh, I became ambassador in 2008. By then we were quite a few people who agreed to be ambassador. And the role of ambassador is to educate men about the better use of masculinity. Oh, yes. And the, where the White Ribbon started, probably I can give you the background, it is, uh, was on the 6th of December 1989 in Montreal, Canada, where there was a young man how, who entered into a classroom where uh, the students were doing engineering course. And when he entered the classroom, it was early in the morning, around 10 o'clock. It was very chill. The weather was very cold. This is in Canada. In Canada. Yeah. So it was early in the morning. So he entered the classroom with a machine gun and a knife, also a pocket knife. And he ordered all female staff to get out of the classroom. There were about 60 students. So he ordered all male students to get out of the classroom. And then there were 14 women left in the classroom and he shot them dead, all of them. And uh, when he was taken into custody and uh, being interviewed to ask why did he commit such a crime, and uh, his response was that he, he couldn't withstand to see women do engineering course. That causes for men. And wow. he killed up those women because they are intruding, intruding the territory which is exclusively for men. And from there, 1990, it's when the United Nations decided uh, uh, to honor those women who were killed because of being female, being women, uh, to to every day which is known as United Nations International Day for Elimination of all form of domestic violence against all violence against women and children. Mm. So in Australia this didn't come on board until 2003. Okay. That's when we started the, it started gaining momentum. So in South Australia it's 2008. So we were quite a few people who were there by then and uh, it is really good to see also George Fomba was one of the 
ambassadors who came on board on that time and it must stuck here I think it must have stuck okay yeah so that is the background of the the white ribbon and the white ribbon has gone strength to strength and the, the role of it is to educate women and also support them to have that conversation and the action which can make women feel safer okay so wow that's that's thank you so much for that background i didn't know about that um that's quite horrific yeah it's horrific yeah no no that's, um let's talk about domestic violence um we hear a lot about you know this expression what does it actually mean what's the legal definition of domestic violence in the community people they have a very different understanding mm. of uh, domestic violence they think that when your physical violence against a woman or in relationship that is violence, domestic violence. But uh, under legal definition of violence, domestic violence is more than that mm. because there are so many other categories being involved within that definition. And that one can include, can include the abusive, um, the violent, uh, abusive, uh, can, uh, verb abusive, mm -hmm. that is one, can be physical, uh, um, violence, can be emotional, Abusive can be financial, can be sexual, and also can be psychological, and it also can be social. Mm. So there are so many groups, and the men they in the relationship they use it. The aim is to control a woman, is to intimidate a woman, it's to dominate the woman. Mm. It's a behavior which wants to evolve, uh, which uh, give men imbalance of power, so that they can control. The, ah, the so, woman in relationship. So control is core. Yes, control. It's a it's a behavior which leads to control and to dominate. Because when you are using a I mean, a, a domestic violence, he wants to embarrass mm. the other partner mm. who is in relationship. So you want to scare them to be worried about you, about the person who is perpetrated of domestic violence. So that is a behavior which is one. The, the end result is to control. Mm, okay. Woman, yeah. okay. So there are so many forms of uh, violence being involved in that. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully, we can discuss yeah. more, uh, most of those forms um, in detail during this um, yeah. conversation. So, <clears throat> within the African communities in Australia, do you think domestic violence is a serious issue? Y yes, uh, domestic violence is a serious issue, not only in the African communities, across all cultures, all classes, and uh, all religions. But uh, they differ from one area to the other and the reasons behind why it has happened it differs based on the uh, where people they come from mm. uh, to be honest i'm from africa i'm from society where men is uh, um, a male dominated society mm. where men they put themselves first so there's that imbalance of power and we see in the society we come from men comes first Mm. And his demands are needs to be attended first. If they are not being met first, that's where we see domestic violence kicking in the relationship. So, based with my positions, uh, my position in the government, in the community, and the, what we see through the statistics, domestic violence is an issue in the African community. I'm not in denial about it. It's okay. an issue, and I've seen so many families break down, and the marriages break down because of domestic violence. But when you talk to men, you say why this has happened they said no i didn't touch my wife because in their mind mm. they believe that it, unless you, you use physical uh, okay. violence it's when they say it's domestic violence okay but unless there's physical injury, injury, yeah. injury. Okay. that's why they say domestic violence mm. but we have seen so many other forms of uh, domestic violence which has led for the family breakdown so it's an issue okay and uh, when we started to classify the community but another community we can also see some differences in some other communities it's very prevalent mm. and in some other communities it's very minimal but uh, we can't be sure hundred percent that it's minimal because it's not happening mm. or it's because women are not reporting they, they are not reporting and uh, they are probably being under the cloud of culture that uh, this is you uh, should expect in a marriage okay. and it should be uh, tolerated Okay. Yeah, but you, I could say clearly that the domestic violence is an issue. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make the correlation between um, you talked about mm. most of our society that we come from is very patriarchal, yes. a male-dominant society. Yeah. How does that relate to domestic violence, um, given the culture of you know man dominance? Yeah. 
and domestic violence. It, 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 yes, that's also, it's obvious because where we come from, women are being told they have to submit themselves to their husbands. Mm. So the husband is the head of the house. Whatever the husband said can be challenged. It has to be followed in certain order. And where we come from, other men, um, you know, uh, including me during my young, my young, being young, going through um, young adult, I could hear men uh, saying, look, oh, you are a man, you have to control your wife, you have to control your women. Like actually use the word control, yeah. yeah. So that's the culture, you're obligated under the word culture, hmm. that as a man you have to do it. And the people, they grew up with that mentality, that they are a man, and women, they've gone through their own mentality that you have to submit yourself to the man and you have to listen what your husband wants and you can't say no or you can't take it out of the marital home mm. and talk about say look i've been abused because other women they won't understand what you're talking about so our culture has been also one of the reasons seeing this perpetuation of domestic violence and that's the one of the areas which we are targeting to say look there's no room for using cultures and excuses. Mm. And also, we are using that to say, look, we know we are from patriarchal society, we know we are male-dominated society, but we need to break that cycle. We can't make that perpetuation so from one generation to the other. So we needed to bring these young people in a new mindset where they can be free from domestic violence. They can see women as equal and they respect and see that there's no differences of uh, sexes in terms of uh, um, doing the things which we do in the public. Whether it's employment, whether what we do at home, we don't come and say, look, I'm a man, everyone has to worship me, has to make sure that you listen <laughs> what I'm saying. I, I love that I've word. Seen, uh, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. it, it yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm very young, but um, I've seen this as well, where um, this entitlement, you know, yeah. men feel very entitled. Absolutely. That's and right. sometimes some women actually nurture that. Yes, because that's how they've been conditioned. Okay. Because once you grow up and you see uh, back home in Africa, mom, dad, they send to, your, uh, to the dad, and then you grow up believing that was needs to happen. And they, also, when they go reach up for uh, 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 puberty, they, you know, they get up from an act. So they have to, to go and be taught by the aunties. They say, look, this is now how to respect your husband. This is what you need to do to your husband. So they grow up with that mentality. And then most, of, uh, most of the people in Adelaide uh, or across the nation when I, I visit some other states, women, they don't want to come and see me or the husband come and see me and they say, look, can you help me? My marriage is going down the drain. And I say, what did you do? He said, no, I did this. I said, why did you do it? That is the domestic violence. They said, I didn't know, but in Africa, everyone does. I said, look, oh, men, you're not in Africa. Even in Africa, things are changing. Mm. So we are moving up to a new high level where we need to have so many men in white ribbon where we can have that conversation and say look we how can we all in relationship respect each other mm. and no one is above the other and how can we balance that power mm. without one controlling the other one exactly and uh, one of the most difficult thing for men to do is to change his mindset yes um, this is a culture, and a culture is identity. It's sometimes who you are. It's going to be hard work trying to change that mentality. How, how can we? How can we go about doing that? Yeah, I, I don't think whether it's a hard way. Uh, I know people when they come, and if they get information mm. to debunk what they have in their mind, mm. to say, look, oh, it's not right, and this is how you need to balance the power. You can't withhold all the finances. And you expect the woman to come, your wife to come and beg. Every time you give her a dollar, you give this one there. Or you can't demand, put your demands to your wife without having consideration. Mm. You can't isolate your wife because if she goes out to talk to other women, she will know other things which is wrong, which you are doing. Mm. And you decide to isolate. You can't do, do those things. Okay. And, but we have seen time from time to time, when you engage into conversation with the men, and make them realize that what they're doing is not right, you see some changes. Okay. And we say, okay, we have those already, parents, but we are also targeting those in schools, young ones. And at home, we are trying to make sure that the young ones, they just learn 
and the parents they help this young man to learn the children to learn what they say they are about to have a positive um, mindset which will take them from this way of controlling to thinking girls are less than boys or boys to think themselves to be superior than girls so we are trying to shift that it can be done but it's not going to be an easy, easy one it mm. will take some time because the other one is generation we have to take time to br bring this the other generation to understand mm. so it is it, it, it's not something which we can do fix we can do quick fix and the other things which i've seen in australia which we don't do it right it's about the government can come and uh, allocate the funding but they do allocation for 12 months oh, one yeah. fiscal year mm. financial year they say look here's money we are going to target the domestic violence you know try to educate and minimize violence against women but at the end of that cycle financial cycle finishes and that's the finish but they think we've already done it mm. but it, it takes a generation to try to to go with it year mm. after year year after year until they grow up they end up with a different mindset okay. so that is the challenge which we are putting to the government say look short term quick fix that don't work mm. it's just does work but we need a long-term strategy and long-term strategy is to educate the men who already grown up and also come to the young ones to break that cycle. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we are talking with um, Dr. Masika. Hope you are enjoying the conversation. Um, please um, send through your comments um, or whatever question you've got for um, our guest so that we can keep this rolling. So um, I've got another question that's really pressing on my mind. Yes. Why victims don't leave, especially women when they're in a relationship, um, it's not working? Why is it so difficult for them to leave? Yeah, it's difficult because, as I said, look, the, the, the aim of the men using domestic violence is mm. to control and they create fear to the victim. Mm. And they create that if, once you, you, you go into the victim's mind and control the victim psychologically, mm. the victim tends to believe that you are the only one they have in this world oh, yes. and you are the only one who can provide that protection to them and they can't leave because you have already controlled their mindset and that's why it's become difficult for them to move and the others we've seen they've tried to move on but they end up lost in their life mm. because the men they came to find to hunt them down and kill them so we have that fear in the community within the victims and also the aim of domestic using of the domestic violence to create fear and control and the, you know scare those victims to think if i leave he's gonna go after me and he will kill me so they have to be there uh. because they don't they believe the perpetrator is the only person who is close to them and who can control them who can support them and provide the care to them. And the other things which uh, makes uh, um, victims to leave is because of uh, um, within the society find the women they are more disadvantaged compared to men. Overall. In terms of overall, in terms of economic empowerment, mm. men have more powers compared to women. And uh, let's say in the African community, I'll pick up our own community find more men educated than women. Mm. And uh, why more women, men are educated than women? It is such from where we come from, because men they'll be given preference to go to school, and women they'll be returned home to support economic activities to generate income. That is one. Mm. And the second reason that it comes through the, within the family, they say, look, if they have a limited amount of resources, they will rather invest, invest on invest on men, mm. because the men will remain within the family. Uh, okay. But if they invest on woman, mm. on the girl, will be married and will go to the other to family. Another family. So that is the reason. And by doing that, you find up women are less uh, educated. And when they come like here, you find up women can't get, get employment. But the men, because they're educated, they can find up a job and move on. So the women becomes depending on, on, the, on the men. So if they leave, well, they're going to get uh, support. So the, that economic empowerment, which mm. is necessary, mm. and also the um, creation of fear and scare to these victims, that's why they end up to stick there. And the other things which cause them is the support within the government system, mm. within the public. 
it's not that much. It makes up for the river still stick up with the abusive husband mm. than living there. And the fourth one, which makes the victim, victim stay, I'll pick again from one African community, is because when the woman leaves, mm. the entire community just uh, cut off. Yeah, and also I stigma saw, uh, yeah, as well. Stigma. Comes yeah. there that uh, she's the cause of the problem, why she, she deserted the husband, the family, why she didn't stay with the husband. Yes, he beats you, he abuses you, he financial whatever, why did he stick with her? Mm.